Hello and welcome to WISE. I'm Rosie Acosta. WISE stands for Women Inspiring Success and Empowerment. This is a 10-part podcast series featuring interviews with successful, inspirational women in business, art, entertainment, and more. Women have been primed to put the needs of others before themselves. Regardless of gender, it takes courage and conviction and a lot of hard work to follow your own passion. But women, as with many other paths in life, have to work a bit harder. The first step on this path is listening to your inner voice. Listening to your own unique voice and finding inspiration within yourself may seem like a daunting task. But today's guest proves that it is possible. Charlene Roxborough Consker is a sartorial force to be reckoned with. Char was born in Jamaica and was raised in Chicago, and she's one of the leading celebrity fashion stylists, designer, blogger, mother, and has gained recognition for working with stars like Eva Longoria, Jeremy Renner, and Freda Pinto. This conversation was fun, engaging, and an enlightening look into Char's history and her work. Her drive and vision are unparalleled. Char's acute awareness of her inner voice, passion, and inspiration are part of what led her to the success she's seen in her career. And Char's expression helps us to express our own unique style. Everything that we wear is a choice. Why not have it be something that makes us feel strong and empowered? Without further ado, here's my conversation with Charlene Roxborough Consker. People see you and see and say, wow, like Char has this incredible career. She's worked with A-list celebrities. She's traveled all over the world. Like her life is so incredible and this is amazing. And they might think like, oh, this happened overnight. Right. Right? Yeah. Like, or you, you have new stylists that come in and because of now social media. They think that they could instantly now like slip into somebody's DMs and it's going to make them this star. Star. Right. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Um, well, you know, I feel like everyone has their own journey and their own, like, focus on what they want to do. I think everyone has to, like, find their own little niche and figure out, you know, in styling, you know, what, what end of it do they want to be in? You know, if you want to be a designer or if you want to just collaborate or do a mixture of everything. Um, you know, when I started off, I started off in like a music role and music videos were like super popular and, you know, I worked with like every music artist and that for me was a great stepping ground because then it was a great way to A, learn how to multitask, B, be patient, learn how to work and not be stressed out and, you know, and just love what you do. Um, because, you know, when you work in music as a stylist, that's like a real grinding, and, you know, and you're working with so many different personalities and figure out how yours fit in without, um, you know, when it comes to fashion, without changing someone who they are and just enhancing their style to make them look better. Yeah. Well, where did you, where did that desire come from? Like your desire to make things look beautiful or to, to me, the way I see your career and what mm-hmm. you do, it's all part of transformation and really getting into a space of feeling your optimum best. I mean, that's what what you do, right? You help people in their transformation, you know, like people might think, oh, it's just styling or putting certain clothes on, but it's like so much bigger than that. Yeah, right. no, it is. I mean, you know, styling is, it's creating who you are. It's like living your best life. It's like, it's, it's, um, it's basically a feeling, um, a mood, um, it says a lot about your personality, who you are, where you came from, your background, um, what you love. Um, it's just like you're creating basically your own movie. And people are watching that on a daily basis, no matter if it's like wearing a jeans and a T-shirt or, you know, um, or, you know, that girl that's always looking, you know, extra glamorous. Whatever it is, that person will remember, oh, you know, whoever that, you know, that person saying, oh, she's known for always looking glamorous or she's known for always having the hottest jeans or whatever it is. Uh, You know, people love fashion no matter if it's the UPS man, right? Because they wear these certain uniforms, they have a certain logo, and then you know that uh, designers like Supreme or like um, 
uh, off white. They all create things that have like a logo that stands out, you know. So it's like designers take a little bit of everything. I mean, as a stylist, I look a little bit of I look at a little bit of everything. If it's like a movie, a flower, a color, a painting, artists, all of that goes into one feeling. Uh, you know, I, I'm not a trendsetter because I'm not into setting trends. I'm, I, I just believe that you set your own vibe and you set your own mood of how you like to look, how you like to feel, what you want to shape your ideas and thoughts about. So that's how I feel when it comes to fashion that you should look at everybody else. You know, if, if um, you should just really believe in what you love and, you know, if, if you're size two or if you're size 14, it doesn't matter. You can still look like the girl that's a size two. You just have to pick the right pieces that shapes your body and your silhouette. Right. Oh, I love that. I mean, I love what you just said because you just explained how styling is so much bigger than just an article of clothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's about your personality. Styling is your personality. You're styling your personality. And in styling that, that's where your true fashion comes out. Of course, you pick up ideas from different people and different designers and, um, you know, um, just every day, every, just everyone around you yeah. that, you know, that pretty much molds your whole fashion thoughts. But I just believe that, you know, sometimes I'm driving and I'm like, oh, my God, I like the way that, that sculpture looks. And then in my head, I'm like, okay, if I have to collaborate and think of something in my head, I'm like, that comes out where I'll say to, I'll have it written down or I'll take a picture and I'll pull it out. And if I'm designing something, I'll say, oh my God, remember the, the shape of that? Why can I incorporate that into a style of something yeah. that I'm doing? Yeah. So. Oh, with, I love that. When you, like, have you always had that desire to create that for people? Like, how did you figure that out for yourself that you you were like, this is my, my medium to f make myself feel this mood or this vibe? Um, you know, ever since I was little, I always loved fashion. Even though, I mean, I was born and raised in Jamaica. So, you know, it's like 100 degrees there. I literally would dress myself up in tights and dresses every day. And funny enough, I would put on like the same dress. It was so interesting, like the... Like, I would go crazy if this dress wasn't around. And, you know, and so as I got older... What was the dress? Can you describe it? Yeah, it was blue with a crimlin underneath it, so it stuck out. And I always wore white tights and these pretty little ballerina shoes. And the dress had white polka dots on it and lace. So I literally would, look, like, go crazy if this dress was nowhere to be found. And, you know, and I remember when I moved to the States, because my... My mom couldn't afford to buy me fancy clothes or, you know, back then it was like the jeans that I think they were probably like Jordache or whatever yeah. that the hot jeans were back then. And we couldn't afford all that. So my mom used to buy us a lot of vintage. So I wore like a lot of like secondhand clothes. So I remember my mom would go to all these like cool vintage stores and I would have all these great sweaters. And funny enough, of course, vintage is a big thing now, but... I, when I was 13, that's all I wore was vintage. But back then, we called them secondhand retails, right, resales clothes. Right, right, right. So, but that's all I wore. So I knew that, you know, I was picking out things where, you know, now it's funny because now you can relate to it now. But back then, kids were like, you know, that was like a stage where yeah. kids would make fun of you. Yeah, because kids, for sure. I mean, I the same, the same. It's like I grew up in East L.A. and not, you know, a, a lower income yeah. uh, housing unit. And, yeah. you know, my parents didn't have money. Like, if we got to go to Kmart to buy, like, clothes, right. it was like, oh, we're going to go right. shopping at exactly. Kmart. So it was like, you know. Right. But, yeah, now it's a thing. Like, you can go vin vintage shopping. You know, back right. in the day, it, it almost made you feel like, you know, like, less than because you had to, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. which I find interesting now that it's totally changed, which I think is, is better. You know, one of the things that I love, you, you talk about this as part of um, your styling ethos is timeless pieces, right? To be able to find things Absolutely. that are timeless. Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely. Because I feel like when you shop, always keep in mind, buy the pieces that are timeless that are effortless, 
that are modern, they're still fresh, and that you can just change them over and over and over again in your wardrobe because not everyone has thousands of dollars to spend. So right. it's like, you know, you always, you know, want to mix your highs with your lows or, you know, just find the right piece that literally works in your wardrobe. If it's, if it's that blazer, you know, make sure it's a blazer that you know that you can wear if it's black. Then, of course, you know, that will go with everything. But you want to make sure the shape is right and then you're not like fussing around to go look for something that doesn't work. So I always believe that when you buy things, buy things that make sense, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. because when you buy that piece that doesn't make sense, you're, you're ending up spending more money because you're ending up trying to figure out how, you know, you're, if it's a top or whatever it is, it becomes a piece that you buy that's probably trendy. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to try to fit it into every piece of your, your wardrobe and it just doesn't work. So right. for me, I'm always like, buy something that makes sense. Yeah. You know, if you have to think, I have like this two second rule. If you put something on and you have to figure out how to make it happen, then it's not the piece for you. But if you put it on and you're like, oh, this is it. It's hot. It works. I can see it with this turtle, with this jacket, whatever it is in your wardrobe, then that's the piece. Yeah. But if you have to call like 10 people and say, oh, you know, I bought this top. Can I send you a photo? What do you think? And then you, it circles from the state you live in to out of state to the girlfriend down the street. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Totally. It's not the piece. Right, it's right. It's like, don't even waste your time. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, it's The, the amount of money you spent on that phone conversation, you could buy a whole top. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Well, what, what I find interesting and what I love about, you know, fashion so much or clothing, you know, that it's, it's still such a tactile experience. You get to, like, touch different fabrics and, mm -hmm. you know, be able to have this, this experience, mm -hmm. you know, and... and to me, it takes me back to what you were talking about before when you were styling music videos. Like, you had to be there. You had to do the hustle. Like, you were there touching clothes or, you know, being interactive. Now, Absolutely. we're in a different time and age where everything's done online mm -hmm. and you don't actually have that opportunity to touch and feel and mm -hmm. have that experiential you know, experience. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. It's so true. How, how do you see that affecting our decision making when it's when we're trying to find something that makes us feel good well if you're familiar with the brand or the designer or a certain texture of fabric like if it's terry then you know what terry feels like if it's cashmere you know what cashmere feels like so that's the part where um it's a bit of uh it's just an everyday life where you know, when, when, you, when you did go to the stores, when you were shopping in stores and you feel a certain fabric, if it's polyester, and if you know you're allergic to polyester, then you know, you know what, I'm shopping on this, whatever site it is, this top is great, the price is great, but it's polyester. So you know that in the past, polyester didn't work for you, then you know not to get it. Right. But then if you know that, you know, oh, you know what, this brand, this website carries X, Y, and Z, I'm familiar with these fabrics, it's it's gonna work. Yeah. You don't need to touch and feel because basically it's before there were tons of websites selling, you know, your entire, you know, all the Everything. brands. Now they're like, you know, cause a lot of stores obviously are only on the website online, and yeah. there's a lot of online shopping and the way that the world is moving today, it's like, you know, everyone wants, you know, um, instant gratification, I guess. Yes. The touch of a button. So, you just have to know that, you know, that maybe the fit may not be right, just depending on the designer and the cut. But otherwise, from that, as far as like the fabric and the textures go, I think that's something that you'll be fine with. Yeah. You know? And it's individual to everyone, I guess. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious to just, you know, talk about this next thing because I this is so this is your entire world you just came you just did your own collection I did. with Vimia I did. CRK I did and which is really exciting yeah. and it's incredible and the designs this is it's what this you're wearing so if you guys are watching yes. this it's beautiful yeah, um, I love these pieces they're so comfortable yeah and so Part of the inspiration behind that, like you've been doing this for so long, I'm, I'm actually surprised it took you this long to actually do something, know. you know? Yeah. So why now? Like what inspired you to, to do this now? Um, well, I've always collaborated with um, different designers. Like last year I collaborated with Alberta Ferretti 
and designed some gowns for Eva at Cannes Film Festival. And prior to that, um, I've collaborated with like different designers. But as far as like an active wear lifestyle brand, I have not done. So uh, Vimya came to me and basically they've seen my work as a stylist and, you know, and said that, you know, they needed some help in certain departments. And, um, you know, designing for me is like a non-brainer. You know, I can have something sketch it. I don't sketch, but I can, I know exactly my thought and my direction and my focus of what I want, how it should look, how it should shape, the colors, all of that. So that is like something I can cook up in two seconds in my head. Cause you know, this is what I love to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when they came to me, I was like, you know what? I want to create something that I felt like wasn't out there. Yes, there's different activewear brands, but I want it to be more of a lifestyle. I call it my mode wear. And yeah. mode wear is basically, I want it to be pieces that you can literally go from the gym to lunch to dinner, just you can wear your sneakers or your jeans. You don't have to go home and change. And, you know, and if it's pieces, that, and I want it to be colors that were very neutral in the, the tones, it just sets a tone in your closet. Um, and pieces that you can incorporate, like if you have a great blazer, you're like, oh, you know, I don't want to wear my blazer or my coat, you can add into the pieces. Right. So, um, you know, I created this line that, um, it's functional, it's effortless, it's modern, it's fresh. Um, it's pieces that, you know, to me, I'm a mom now. I'm a mom, I, well, I've always been a mom with three stepsons, but we just had a little girl and I'm like on the go. So I don't yeah. have time to figure out all my looks anymore like <laughs> I used to. You know, I used to have a whole thing where I would figure it out, lay it out. Now I'm just like grabbing what's close. And then <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to go out there looking crazy. I still have to hold it together. <laughs> Because one thing with being a mom, you don't want that mom that looks like she's schlepping all the time. I always want to look put together, even if it's leggings and a t-shirt, whatever it is, simplicity. Mm -hmm. But I still want it to look like it you came love together. The simplicity, I love that. Yeah. But I think so. And and what is the importance behind that? What do you think it creates for moms out there? Just easy. So you know, this line, it's like literally just to me. I feel that when you put it on. It all it automatically looks good. Like if you put on the leggings and the sweatshirt, it looks like a look, without trying to be do too much. Right, right. Like or trying to look, you know, if you're an older mom, you don't you're not trying to look like you're 22, you know. So basically, you want to look just very chic and fresh. So I just believe that you know the pieces are just very easy. So when you put them on, um, they create a look. If you want to wear your flats or your heels or your sneakers it automatically creates a look without you trying too hard. Right. You know, there are pieces that you literally can just throw on and go. There's a, um, one of the looks that's called the two-way parachute pants. And they're just high-waisted pants with a parachute top. And the parachute top you can incorporate into, like, um, wear with sweatpants or biker shorts or, you know, or jeans, whatever it is. Yeah. So I want it to be something that's more of a lifestyle. Yeah. And, you know, and if you are traveling, you want to be still cute at the airport and not look like, oh yeah, and not schlep. Look like you've just been schlepping all day. Like, you know, with the baby and the car seat and the whole thing because <laughs> it's just not hot. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness or is preventing you from achieving your goals? I know that the last couple of months for me and a lot of people I know it has been such an emotional upheaval up and down. This is coming from somebody who's been in and out of therapy for the last 15 years. BetterHelp will help assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line, it's not a self-help, it's a professional counseling service done straight online. There's a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas, especially with a lot of things being closed down right now. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. You'll get a timely and thoughtful response. Plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. So you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. 
BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so that they make it easy for you and free to change counselors if you need. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit their website and read their testimonials that are posted daily. Visit betterhelp.com forward slash wise. That's better H-E-L-P and join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. Today, they're offering our listeners for the WISE podcast 10% off of your first month if you visit betterhelp.com forward slash WISE. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com forward slash WISE, W-I-S-E to get 10% off of your first month. So my workout schedule's been rather hectic lately and I'm noticing it's starting to really wear me down. And even though I'm getting all my workouts in, practicing yoga nidra and meditation and doing whatever I can to keep my stress levels low, I can still feel like I'm stressed. No one likes feeling stressed out and even worse, how it can affect the people closest to you. But lately I've been doing something a little different and it's been helping me feel great again. A friend of mine who recently recovered from an absolute burnout told me that it wasn't time off or more rest or a secret relaxation technique that saved him. This is where it gets really interesting. He said that all he did was add a mineral to his diet based upon his doctor's recommendation. I was hooked. So I asked him, of course, what mineral was it? And he told me that he was recommended a super dose of magnesium. You see, magnesium is the fourth most abundant mineral in the human body. Since the nutrient is responsible for three to 600 different biochemical reactions in the body, including metabolism, when your levels are low, you struggle with sleep, energy, metabolism, pain, and stress. You can get magnesium from certain foods like black beans, nuts, avocado, spinach, and more, but if you really want to make sure you get enough magnesium for what your body needs, I recommend using a supplement in addition to these foods. Now, before you go research magnesium supplements, know this. Most magnesium supplements fail to help you beat stress for two primary reasons. The first, they are synthetic, unnatural, and not recognized by your body. And two, they are not full spectrum, meaning they don't have all seven forms that you need. So today I want to introduce you to the best magnesium supplement I've found. It's the most potent, complete, first full spectrum magnesium formula ever created. It's called Magnesium Breakthrough. Magnesium Breakthrough is a complete formula that includes naturally derived forms of all seven forms of supplemental magnesium, and it doesn't contain any synthetic additives or preservatives. This is the most potent oral magnesium you will ever find, period. Many notice a sense of calm, relaxation, their nervous system and stress levels are soothed, and better sleep is often observed within the first week. If used daily and as instructed, most people use magnesium breakthrough in the morning, which is when I like to use it, to help them stay calm and resilient to deal with the day. And even within three to five weeks, most people experience a level of peace and serenity that they haven't felt in a very long time. I highly recommend trying magnesium breakthrough for at least 30 days to see how it will make a difference in your mood or stress levels. Today, you can get 10% off with a special WISE podcast coupon code when you visit biooptimizers.com forward slash WISE and enter the code WISE10. That's B-I-O-P-T-I-M-I-Z-E-R-S forward slash W-I-S-E and use the promo code WISE10. And now back to our show. I'm going to just ask you uh, a couple of questions because I'm, yeah. I'm curious as to yeah. what your response is. <laughs> okay. Um, when somebody says the word, like, what is your definition? What is your definition of wisdom? Wisdom is um, just being, being wise of your surroundings, um, being wise of the people that you bring into your life. Um, um, listening to, listening to your intuition mm-hmm. and making wise decisions mm-hmm. on them, um, you know, and, um, uh, you're, it's just the things that you've learned, um, in your, in your, in your, in your, 
in your being and and just making your your decisions based on that. Yeah. No, I love what you said, especially about being wise with the people that you have in your life. Um, for you, like, because you work with so many people and so many, you know, A-list celebrities mm -hmm. and how important is it to you to have a, a good core group of people in your life? Like, have, do you have, like, the same people in your life that you've had for years and years, or does it change for you? Um, I do have the same, there are a few, because, you know, I believe that it's not about quantity, it's about quality. Mm. Um, it's not about having 20 friends, it's about having, if it's the right three, four, whatever it is, five, whatever it is, you know, that you know those are the person that you can literally call on at yeah. 2 a.m. How many people can you call at 2 a.m. in the morning? Those are the ones that I believe are going to be there. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, I don't know. I just, you know, I just believe that having the, the, you know, the right core of people around you really says a lot about who you are as a person. So, you know, if you have, if you surround your friends with, if you surround your, your, your lifestyle with people that just want to be there for the wrong reasons, mm -hmm. then, you know, um, how could you... How could you how could you build a proper relationship or friendship in that type of environment? Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, I think that's really uh, it's a really good point, especially with, you know, just women and being able to acquire that wisdom or to learn the lessons throughout your life. You have relationships come in and some relationships go. go. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Like for you how how do you know when you have the right people in your life? Like, what is it? Like, if somebody's watching this or listening to this mm -hmm. and they're really into everything that you're saying and they're really vibing with, with your ethos and mm -hmm. your philosophy and maybe they have people in their lives that they feel like they're not making the wisest choices. Like, how do people, how do you know? Like, how do you know when you're maybe not, hanging around with the right people? I think it's your intuition. You know, it, I base everything on my feeling mm. and the person and, and the people that are in my space at that time. I can pretty much pick up on that mm. instantly without, again, without asking five people or two people, what do you think about that person? Yeah. If you have to go through all that, then... It's not the person to be yeah. around. Well, and it's awesome you know? because it's the same way that you were talking about choosing the right outfit. It's Absolutely. like the same. I love that. Absolutely. That's it goes hand in hand for me. You know, I'm, you know, I, when you, when you choose to be around people, you just have to be very smart. If your intuition is, it's a, for, it's a certain feeling that you, that you feel, you know, that even if that person's outgoing and fun, and, you know, it, it's, are you, what, what are you gaining? Are you looking to learn, build a proper friendship? Or do you have anything in common? Or, um, you know, because when you, it's, it's like, it's like basically dating or being married. When you, when you meet friends, you want to make sure that you're, you're basically, you're learning. You, I like learning from people um, because I think that's a really important thing is that, uh, Oh, sorry. <laughs> is that to learn and share ideas? If it's fashion, mm -hmm. if it's health, if it's wellness, if it's if it's you know, mommy talk, mm -hmm. whatever it is, you want to you want to surround yourself with people that you can literally trust mm -hmm. and get like honest opinions from, without them giving you like thirty different. Uh, pieces of information that doesn't make sense. Yeah, no, 100%. I totally, I totally agree with that. What has been the biggest, what has been the best piece of advice that somebody ever gave you? Um, when it's, when it's the right time for you, um, uh, the, whatever it is will happen in that right space. Mm. Um, you know, instead of don't force things, whatever it is, if it's a job or if it's, um, you know, because of styling, there's, you know, you, you, you live in a world today where there's a lot of competition with different things. 
So there's room and space for everyone. So I always feel, and my mom would always tell me this too, she would always say, you know, that just wasn't the right project for you or, or you know, it, it's, it's all about timing, you know, or she would always say, just pray about it, it's gonna happen. You know, what, would you, mom, what was your initial reaction? But when, because I, I would get that too, and my initial reaction was, was always like, ah, you have no, you don't know, you know. It's right. Just like, so what was your initial reaction when she would say, oh, just pray about it? Or when she would say, I, but the thing with my mom, I believe everything she says. So I'm like, you're right. I don't even ask her. I, because my mom has this sense that, you know, like I said, my mom's Jamaican, so she has this sense where, She's a believer. She's got the superpower. I swear, if she tells me something, if it's something that, you know, if it's work or if it's, you know, or whatever it is that's going yeah. on, and if I share it with her and she says to me, it's going to happen, you just have to be patient or don't think too much about it, just relax. Yeah. And she'll say, you know what? That wasn't the right thing for you. It's going to come. I just let it go. I'm like, she's right. And every time she says that, it's usually right. You know? So I just, I'm like that. I don't really try to, if something isn't working, I don't force it. I just let it be. Yeah. Or if it's something that I know that I can change, if it's something where I'm like, how can I make this, um, if it's fashion or if it's something that I'm working on, how can I not make it work, but what, what am I doing wrong in this little um, project that I can fix that can make it happen? And then I just fix it. But I also believe that, you know, in my work, there's no such thing as no, you know, when it comes to a client. Uh, if they ask for something, I never say no. I always try to figure out how can I make this happen? Because as, as a part of being a stylist, your job is to figure out how to make things happen. Wow. Um, and, you know, I don't like the word no. Even, like, with my daughter, I'd never say no. Because no always, always makes you feel like you can't get the job done or you're doing something wrong. Or I always explain to her, or I'll, you know, I have these little sounds that I'll make, like, uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> and then when she hears that, she knows that, okay. Or I redirect her into you know, into I something positive. That. How long have you had that? That's a really great... I, uh, which part? The philosophy, the no. The no? no. Um, well, <laughs> since my daughter, I've always, you know, because I was just like, no, just, just sounds so like sometimes aggressive and strong. No. Can you have this? No. Why can't I do that? I don't know. So I just don't like the word. So I figured, you know, and my husband and I, we talked about it. And, you know, so with Stone, we never say no. Um, if she's like, you know, if it's something where I feel like she's going to have her little self like in danger, if it's next to a fireplace, I'll say, uh, uh, uh. And then I explain to her why she shouldn't be there. Right. It's hot. It's, you know, you so can hurt yourself. You'll, you'll get burned. But, we, but we re I redirect, redirect her into, you know, something else. Yeah. Oh, that's so, so good. Uh, wise podcast, Wise represents women inspiring success and empowerment. Mm -hmm. So who are uh, women in your life that inspire you to continue on your path or that maybe inspire you to think of things differently? Well, I have to say my mom, for sure. Sometimes, you know... I as much when you were younger and you're just, you know, you've always heard that, oh, when you get old, you're going to turn into your mom. But now I feel like my mom is just so wise, yeah. you know. I can talk to her and I'm just like, oh, my goodness. She is just, like, clear and, you know, on everything, on every aspect. Of course, you know, she always tells me I get her fa my fashion sense from her. She's like, you know, who do you think taught you all this fashion? Because my mom was known for when she would go to church, everything would match. Like her hat, her gloves, her dress, like literally everything would match from head to toe. But, um, you know, um, I just feel like I just learned so much from her. And another person that, I, that inspires me is Anastasia. Um, she's one of my best friends. She's a dear friend of mine. I feel like, you know, this is a person that she came from Romania. She came here. She didn't speak the language. She learned the language, you know, she 
she left a communist country um, and came here with her daughter and like explored this place and you know and tried to figure out how to make a living and came up with eyebrows yeah and look at where she is today you know and she's just hardworking and you know and and her daughter and, and and they just put so much energy and time into everything and and as much as they're into this makeup business they also are willing to help others and teach others and you know, and not worry about competing with the next brand and I think that's what it's about is just being inspired by the right women around you and I love that I love to be inspired by you know um, by women that can teach me something that um, which is all about teaching but you know because one day I have a daughter and I want her to be inspired by powerful strong women and and make her own um, space and path in life and and you know and help others it's, it's all about honestly about just helping others and and um, as much as you can right and, yeah and um, and what inspires you and I think that's that's you know my mom of course yeah no I I think it, it's the perfect segue to the last question mm -hmm. and you are a mom and you do yeah. have a daughter what's what is your intention with what is the biggest lesson that you want her to learn that you want to teach her like what do you if she had if you could tell her something mm -hmm. that is gonna be her mantra that's gonna stay with her for the rest of her life what what would it be um, to to love yourself because I believe that a no one is going to love you as much I mean of course her parents but you have to learn to love yourself. Mm -hmm. That's the number one thing. Also about um, 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 never let anyone say you can't do something, you know, because, you know, there's times when you're going to be working on working in life and people say, oh, no, you know, I don't think that works for you. Mm -hmm. but you should always listen to your instincts. Listen to your instincts and trust your instincts and, um, and listen and just believe in yourself because you have to believe in yourself as much as I can sit here and tell you, you look great, you look beautiful, but whatever it is is going on. You have to trust and believe that in order to make yourself move forward, whatever yeah. it is. So I just believe that you have to just trust, believe in yourself. Um, you have to guide your own intuition into your own path um, because I believe that as much as um, you know, you go to school, you listen to your teachers and you listen to other people. But the truth is you literally have to shape your own knowledge of who you're going to be one day. Yeah. And I would just tell her to just trust your instincts, love yourself, believe in, believe that you can be anything you want to be. And of course, believe that you're a superstar. <laughs> Sure. Oh my, that was so good. That, that's great. That's beautiful. And I, I can't wait to see Stone grow into that yeah. and to just take yeah. over the no. entire world. Yeah. Amazing. So for the people that are watching this yeah. uh, video or if they're listening to the podcast, where can they go for more information? They want to learn about you or they, you know, just want to send yeah. you some some love or where can they get your um, CRK? Yes, absolutely. So um, for the collection, go to mode, M-O-D, mode by CRK.com. And also that's where um, my lifestyle journal is that I write about fashion, beauty, health, wellness, destination, all the fun things that I've done in my life and I've just created this little journal that pretty much is based on my lifestyle and people and friends around me. And also my, um, my Instagram is Char Rock Stylist. So it's C-H-A-R-R-O-X and Stylist. And um, yeah, that's where you can find me. Yeah, so and we'll put all of those links in yes. the show notes. So if Absolutely. you're watching this video, it'll be in the description section. Or if you're listening to this podcast on whatever platform you're listening to this on, all of that information will be there. So you can just click and follow or get some of these amazing pieces because they are incredible. I can't wait to get mine. Absolutely. Um, 
I just want to just take a moment to acknowledge you and to thank you, of Char, course. for oh being an inspiration for me, for just everything that you do. Like, Aww. you truly are an innovator and such an inspiration. And I just want to thank you for being Aww, on this podcast and God. for just being awesome. Thank you for thank having you. me. Thank you so much for listening to the Wise Podcast. Thank you so much, Shar, for joining us and being a part of this incredible community. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe, rate, and review wherever you get your podcast. We really appreciate your support. This podcast is produced by me, Rosie Acosta, and Aviv Rubenstein. You can find Aviv on Instagram at Rambo Calarissian. Join us next week for another episode. This is your host, Rosie Acosta, sending love.